Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are having a great day. And if you are new here and this is the first time that you're seeing me, welcome to my channel. My name is Bree and I am basically just sharing my experiences as I traverse through life and my career as a software engineer. So today I wanted to share a problem that I was given that basically changed my outlook and my thinking on how I approach algorithms and just problems in general that I come across when I'm developing. I like to think of it as my aha moment or my awakening, if you will, and I'm really excited to share it with you today. But first, I want to invite you all to follow me over on Instagram. Over there, I post about three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and I post mini blog style pictures, captions, things that are going on in life, my everyday whereabouts, and just, you know, fun stuff like that. And it's a little bit more intimate, I would think, than YouTube where it's just one-way communication. And yeah, you guys can interact with me and we can have actual conversations with each other over there. So I will go ahead and leave my link to my Instagram, Bites of Brie, up in the top card here somewhere. And of course, as usual, it'll be down in the description. So. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about, of course, is what was the problem that I was given that forced me to change my outlook on programming, made me change how I approach problems? Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, if it did all that and it changed how she thought about things, it must be super, super complex, really complicated. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I am pretty sure, I'm almost embarrassed. It was, looking back on it, a really, really simple problem. Depending on your current level of programming and actually even the language that you're using, you might think that this is a complex problem or somewhat of a simple problem. I know that some languages have a built-in uh, method to go ahead and allow you to accomplish this problem that I was given. But at the time, I didn't know of any um, built-in methods that would allow me to do it. And I found it to be fairly complex and I, I don't know why, I just couldn't wrap my head around how I could complete it. So now that I'm rambling, the problem itself was given two uh, numbers that are inside of variables, switch them without using a third variable. So if you have A and B, switch the two values of A and B without using a temporary variable. Yep, that's it. All we had to do is switch them. And you might be saying, or some people might say, you're not even a good coder if you couldn't get that on the first go around, if you don't already know it, you're not that smart if you can't get that immediately. I know exactly how I would do it. And that's great if you do, but are those things true? No. And if you have a problem that is sort of similar to mine where you can't figure it out um, immediately and it doesn't come to you immediately, that doesn't mean that you're not a good coder and it doesn't mean that you're not smart. It means that maybe you have to change how you're thinking about the problem and how you're looking at the problem. So for me, it was that I needed to change how I was thinking and how I was approaching the problem. I basically had to start thinking like a programmer. But what does thinking like a programmer actually mean? Oftentimes, and I can definitely say this for myself, when I'm learning a new programming language, it's super easy to get lost in some of the built-in functionality, all of the features, all of the new things that this programming language provides for you. Each programming language has their own built-in functionality, their own built-in methods, a different way that they attack their data structures and how you can use, interact, and traverse through them. Basically, I was getting very caught up in trying to memorize and understand and digest these individual components of the programming language that I sort of got lost in my goal and forgot what I was actually trying to do. So I feel like I get stuck in what's called tutorial purgatory, or at least I used to before I figured out what was actually happening. I feel like tutorial purgatory is basically where you're trying to go through a bunch of tutorials, learn as much as you can, but what you realize is you're not really using that knowledge and you're not practicing. And if you don't practice what you're learning, 
you're sort of not really learning it because it's easy to tell me what something can do, but it's a completely different deal to be able to demonstrate exactly what it does. I had lost sight of what my larger overarching goal was. As software engineers, software developers, programmers, whatever your title is, we're really just problem solvers in disguise. Computers and technology in general really just make our lives a lot easier by calculating, automating, and making items more accessible. So when we as developers program and create new functionality for technology, basically we are just automating the solutions for problems that people have or for industry needs. So like I said, when I first saw this problem, I was learning JavaScript. And actually, when I first took a look at it, I felt like there had to be something built into JavaScript to let me do this quickly. And for the life of me, I could not figure out anything that would allow me to do it. And I realized that I was thinking about the problem like it was a trick question rather than something that could be a real world problem. I thought that it was a test of how much do I know about JavaScript rather than can I actually think critically and solve the problem? The problem never said, what is the absolute best way to switch the two numbers? It didn't say, what method can you use that's already built into JavaScript to switch these two numbers? It didn't say, what data structure might you be able to use this to switch the two numbers? It just said to switch them. I feel like we can all relate and think back to a time when we have tried to rack our brain trying to figure out how the functionality could be completed with something that's already built in rather than just trying to actually understand and solve the problem. So I wanted to share a few things that I have learned and some things that I practice as I am going through my days and weeks at work, some things and tips that I use to make large problems not seem so large or complex. So the first one might sound super, super basic, but it's probably basic because you've heard it before and it's important. Before you can solve any problem, you have to fully understand what your problem is. You should also understand how your resolution will be affecting your users or your customers. I like to always ask clarifying questions to make sure that I fully understand or just say, hey, can I say this back to you to make sure that I actually get it? That way the person who's giving me the requirement or the problem or you know whatever I'm working on can verify that my understanding is correct. Also, don't be afraid to make flowcharts, diagrams, if it's something pretty complex, like there's multiple options that somebody can go down. So my second tip is to break down your problem into smaller, more attainable chunks. It's easier to divide and conquer rather to take everything on at one time. This method is also super useful for tracking your completion. Rather than trying to work on multiple different facets of something that's really, really big, if you chunk them up into smaller pieces, you can clearly say, okay, it's not fully done yet, but I have done these two things, or I've done this one thing that's going to contribute to the larger problem at hand. So I use this regularly at work. I work with a telecommunications product that is pretty big and there are multiple different types of accounts that our users can have. So based on a single API response, that can spawn nine or 10 different options and different flows through our application that the user can go down. So instead of trying to figure out how I'm going to achieve all of these at one time, it's always way easier to work on one to completion and then I can work on another one and integrate as I go. We do it this way, A, because we work in two week sprints, so it is easier to attain a smaller chunk of something in two weeks rather than trying to figure out how to cram the whole thing in but also it's better for testing because you can test and deploy each single piece as you go. So the third tip is something that I really struggled with and it's something that I continue to struggle with to this day, but it's something that I try to have in the back of my mind and try to remind myself of. And it is, you don't have to have a perfect solution to begin with. One of the reasons that I love coding and programming so much is because there's always multiple ways to solve a problem. Everybody thinks differently. 
Therefore, everybody who looks at a problem will see it differently and have a different take on the problem and how they might solve it. There's no one exact way to do things. There may be more efficient ways to do things, but there's definitely not one specific way that it has to be done. And I like that freedom and flexibility that it gives you to uh, accomplish a problem and then as you grow as a developer, see how you can refactor things, which is actually my fourth tip. You should always strive to learn more and to make your code better as you gain new knowledge and as you network with people who have different perspectives with you or different perspectives than you excuse me this is something that i also think about um, regularly at work i might think about something differently than my coworker might think about something and vice versa so when we're doing code review or i'm trying to solve a problem or they're trying to solve a problem it helps to see what do they know what do i know how can their knowledge influence how I'm coding. How can it make it a little bit easier? How can it make my life a little bit easier? Because once you solve this problem, it's solved. And providing that you understand how it's solved, you have that knowledge and that knowledge will help you. Solve. So after tons of chicken scratch and doodles, I ended up asking for help. And the hint that the person gave me was to stop overthinking it, stop overcomplicating it, get down to what your actual problem is. You need to switch two variables. Think about what is your problem. You want to switch them, so I broke my problem up into two pieces. I want to get the value of A into B, and I need to get the value of B into A. And once I was able to remove myself from the problem and remove sort of my ingrained thinking of, well, what method do I use? What data structure do I use? I was able to come and stumble upon a really simple method for achieving this and I was super embarrassed that it took me almost an hour to complete this and I was able to resolve it using super simple addition and subtraction. That's right, it's crazy that I was just able to use addition and subtraction. Of course, now that I know um, how to do it, um, there are definitely multiple ways to achieve this. So the solution that I stumbled upon for the problem was not absolutely perfect, but did it work? Yes. I walked away from this problem understanding that I can't let the anxiety of not remembering every single thing about a programming language or a framework overwhelm me and cloud my view for trying to solve the problem at hand. And I think that a lot of new programmers, um, people who are learning new languages might come across this as well. So I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope this really helped some of you out. Leave me your tips below or what you think sort of hinders you sometimes from being able to separate the language from the problem. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I can't wait to see you all in my next video.